intimacy. Honesty. Commitment. You. you. Me. Mm. Us. Us. If I were a boy, even just for a day. Now, we all of us have ever thought of becoming a boy or a girl or being in a position of a different gender role. Well, we always thought about it, but you know, at the end of the day, we're still the girl that we are or the boy that we are. And today's topic is really important to me and it's also really important to a lot of people in Vietnam because it is on the issue of gender equality. And I'm going to be talking to our guest as a woman and our guest is going to be talking to me as a man to see what, as women and men, can we do to create that honesty commitment and that kind of, you know, integrity uh, in the conversations that we have and in our roles in society. So, of course, I'll still be the woman that I am, but we're going to meet our guests right now, okay? Let's go. Okay, so we're back in the studio and today we're going to be talking about gender equality and gender roles and of course we have somebody who's in the studio with us. You might not really expect him to be talking about this topic, but he did release a music video and uh, we're going to talk to him about that, okay? So welcome, Lem Bice. Thank you for coming. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that, mid, uh, that music video, I Was Wrong, that was released on International Women's Day. I Was Wrong. Um, four years ago, I was traveling through Vietnam. Mm -hmm and I saw there's this huge gap between women and men. So I saw that the women um, who are in charge, who are the bosses, who are running a show, uh, the number rose. So I thought it's, it would be a good idea to write about it. So uh, that was the first thought. And uh, the name of the song was Vân. Mm -hmm. Vân ơi. Oh, uh, yeah, because uh, I had a Ex um, personal experience with, with that woman, a s strong woman who does many jobs at the same time. Um, and it happened to be that I met Kim Mies mm -hmm. and um, she helped me with that song and, and she helped me uh, clean the lyrics in Vietnamese and um, yeah, it worked out quite well. Mm -hmm. So it's about women, and it was initially called Vân and then it transformed to I Was Wrong. Now what was, that yeah. what was the... the the, the thing is that I see um, men have still a lot of prejudices mm -hmm. where I come from in Germany. Um, the gender equality is normal. Every woman and man, they have the same rights. They can do as much as men can do. Mm -hmm. And it's totally normal and okay. And here it is like, oh, the man uh, can go to party, can drink beer, can go home late. And when the women do it, then it's like, oh no, it's not cool. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that was it. Yeah. And I thought, well, work with it, uh, write about this topic, and maybe help to normalize it. Mm -hmm. So, coming from Germany, you know, you, you come from such a diverse background. Your, pa your parents are Laotian, your mother is Vietnamese ethnically, but she, she, you know, she speaks Laos, right? Um, mm. And you grew she grew up, up in Laos. She grew up in Laos. And you, you grew up in Germany. And now you're in Vietnam. Yeah. How, is, how is gender role different in all of those cultures? Yeah, well, uh, as I said, um, Vietnam and Laos, women are pretty much devout. They have to be home and cook for the man. Mm -hmm. And I can remember when, whenever I visit my family, the man sits on the table and do nothing. And the women they uh, prepare the food they and when we finish they do the dishes uh, so the whole work uh, in germany we we split it so when the women cook the men makes the dishes or versa yeah that's my experience um women are more devout to men mm -hmm. in vietnam and laos but mm -hmm. it's changing yeah uh, now that you've said that, I remember um, I've, I've been to family dinners or, and family lunches when I was 
a younger kid, and I do I do remember that you know the uncles and and the grandpas and you know all the men in the family will be sitting um, around and waiting yeah. for the women to bring treated the food like over. kings, right? <laughs> And you know, at, when I was younger, I did remember myself saying, you know, like you guys aren't doing anything. Why do I have to bring you all this stuff? Mm. And they were just like, well, you know, you're going to be a good girl if you do that. Yeah, a good wife. <laughs> but um, I think you know, times have changed so much. I think now, um, you know, women have a lot more voice. I think Vietnamese women has always been very, very strong in the war. You know, we we were one of the we were one of the forces that that was, you know, the guerrillas and then the people taking care of the, the military forces. So we're quite active yeah. and in the workforce, I think we have a lot of opportunities now compared to before. It is said that women are not stronger, but uh, you can put more work. They're, they're yeah. working, they're, how say, you can do m many things yeah. at once. We right? can multitask. Yeah, you're multitask. Yes, yes. What do you do personally um, to, to support women and to support men mm. um, on a personal basis? I uh, participated in a competition. If the music video has more than 10 million views, yeah. I would get 1 billion, mm -hmm. which I promised to donate 500 million. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't work in that uh, month. We mm -hmm. didn't get the number. Mm -hmm. But um, if it doesn't work, I will give uh, 10 million of my own money to a women organization, to an uh, um, organization which helps uh, orphans. I uh, supported my Koi. She's a yeah, friend. Michael. She started um, to work uh, in the politics mm -hmm. and, and fight yeah. for women's rights, right? Yes. So yeah, I support her with, uh, with a little amount what I have and what I can give to her. Mm -hmm. That's great. Have you ever, um, you know, for you, for in your family or in whatever, witnessed any instances of gender inequality? Mostly when I see uh, people working uh, on the houses, I see women carrying the... The babies? The, the, no, the stones, <laughs> the hard, the, the, heavy, the heavy stuff. Yeah. The hard work, I always see women working and the men like commanding. So I don't know. Is that inequality? Probably. Mm -hmm. Does it mean like women are more willing to, to work for less money? Probably, yeah. Because they have to take care for the, whole, for, for the kids, for the family. Mm -hmm. Do you think women and men should be paid the same? Uh, definitely. For Absolutely. the same work, yeah. Not because I'm a man, I get more money. Mm -hmm. I should get well paid from the work. Mm -hmm. And if the woman does the same work, as good as, as me, she deserves all the money. She should. Yeah. So who's your favorite uh, female figure and who's your favorite male figure? Female figure, Kimis. Kimis is your f favorite female figure. Is she figure? here? She might be coming here she today. She might be coming yeah. and performing with me. Yeah, I hope that you'll be able to sing that song together. <laughs> you know, the I Was Wrong song together. Yeah, Kimis is a, a very impressive um, woman. Mm -hmm. And she stands for the new generation of women. Yes. For me, she's the best rapper. Yeah. And, uh, but she has a wonderful voice as well. For oh, she does. How did you guys meet? In the studio. Oh, in the studio. Over a uh, French friend, music uh, producer, Vanyo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he introduced us and uh, there was this click, it, it matched her humor and mine and so we had a lot of fun. That's great. Hanging out and, and doing music together. Okay, that's great, that's great. So hopefully we'll get a chance to hear you sing that song. Yeah. Yeah, I was wrong. But before we hear you sing that song, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you to a game. Okay. Of, um, here on the Damayelt show. It's called the Damayelt Marathon Challenge. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to talk more about gender roles as we play the game, okay? All right. All right, let's move on over. Welcome to the new version of Damayelt Marathon. The Devil's Bay will challenge our guests by being blindfolded, looking for three items in those separate boxes. Next, the photo shoot challenge will be even harder when they have to spin at least one round on our tricky spinning plate until we got the right position of a perfect photo. And look at this, with the perfect fingerprints, you will see a beautiful picture. And at the monitor, series of skill for the IR test will be challenged in a limited of time. Last but not least, in the new version of Sneak of Sham, our guests have to sneak from eyesight of Phoebe, collecting five words, then persuade our beautiful host for the last one, then form the word. Is it hard enough? The IO Marathon will start right now. Hello, we are back, and I'm Visai, and this is the actual host, 
Phoebe. Yes, thank you, Visai. Thank you, Langlam. And of course, this is the Damayal's Marathon Challenge. And we have the contender right here. You're going to start with the first challenge. All right, I have to wear this? Yes. Okay. And you know All what right. you have to find? Uh, you can try if I can see. So, no. No. See, right? <laughs> oh, okay. you know what I'm doing. That means you can see. No, no, I can't see. <laughs> All right, ready, get set, go. Okay, I have to find key, right? The key, the passport, and the confirmation letter. This is, this is a mouse. That is a mouse. What is that? Uh, this is something for a woman. <laughs> uh, key, passport. Key, passport, and confirmation letter. Oh, that I That looks like fresh. a passport, right? That looks like a passport. <laughs> All right. Uh, confirmation letter. Confirmation letter. Very easy. Okay, one last one. Key. Where where's, can it where's be? Where's the third? Here. Where can it be? Where Here. Can it be? Okay. Uh, radio. No. Uh, keys. Keys. This is too fast. All right, you got it. Okay, now you're unblindfolded. Take out your blindfold. Okay, you're off to the next challenge. The photo right. challenge. What is the next challenge? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, make sure you go and spin one round, at least, and then pose. I think you, you need to press it again. The timer's oh, no. not on. No. I can see you, but I can't see the timer. Shit. There we go. Spin, 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 spin. Oh, don't fall, don't fall. And he's... Oh, you got it, you got it, you got it. Okay, Third. next. Fingerprint, what is fingerprint, fingerprint, fingerprint. Get all of your 10 fingers printed. Make a really nice picture because the fingerprint Copy will be given to one of our IELTS fans. Oh, that is very smart. Done, all in one go. Can you show, can you show it? <laughs> 20 fingerprints. Can you 20. show it to the audience? Where, here, there. Perfect, all right. Okay. 20 fingerprints. Okay, now you can wipe off your fingers and you're on to the next challenge. First off is the headphone challenge. Let's see what you have. You will hear a telephone conversation between a customer and a sales assistant at a shop that rents bicycles. Hello, Clark Cycle Hire. My name's Keith. How can I help you? Oh, hello. I saw your ad in the local paper. So if I want to have a look at the bikes, how do I find you? I live near the university, by the way. Right. First you take Woods Road as far as the main police station. I know it. It's right next to the park. Yes, that's it. And after the police station, there's a turning to the right called Oak Street. At the big supermarket? Uh, no, it's before then. It's actually between the police station and a garage on the other side. OK. So, you go down Oak Street until you reach the health centre on the right. If you get to a pub called the Maple Leaf, you've gone too far. All right? Yes, I've got that. Now, opposite the health centre, there's a pharmacy, and we're just behind that. OK, fine. I'll try to call over sometime tomorrow. Great. See you then. Bye. Three is C. Three is C. You're absolutely correct. You're on to the next one. Okay. And now you've got to find three words up among the underlined and find a synonym for them. Okay. Uh, information. Mm -hmm. Details. Details, yeah. Percentage. Uh, percentage. Uh, amount. Urban areas, l local urban areas, urban areas, living in urban areas. Countryside? Countryside, maybe something a little bit more metropolitan. Cities? Cities, yeah. That's great. Okay, so you're on to the pronunciation. You've got to read the whole paragraph, but you just need to get one sentence 100% correct, okay? Okay. Let's start. We want to try and galvanize as many men and boys as possible to be advocates for gender equality. Feminism, by definition, is the belief that men and women should have equal rights and opportunities. Both men and women should feel free to be sensitive. Both men and women should feel free to be strong. It is time that we all perceive gender on a spectrum, not as two opposing sets of ideals. Ooh, I feel like I'm in 
a huge meeting mm. in a cathedral where the king is speaking. It's like a freedom speech yes. of, uh, what was it? Martin Braveheart, the movie? Yes. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, let's move on up okay. here. And you yeah. can take off that, those yes. headphones already. That's great. We have the last game. It yes. is called the Sneak of Shame. Okay. And have you ever sneaked away from your house or have you done anything sneaky before in your life? Never. Never ever. I totally believe you. <laughs> I never lie. Just one, two, three times. Okay. It means 123 times. <laughs> see, I can see a white lie there a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, but the next game is the Sneak of Shame. You're going to stand at the end of our stage. I'm going to stand here. Your goal is to go up to me and pick up all the letters that's on the ground. Every time I turn over, on the count of three, you have to pause whatever you're doing. So if you're slouching, if you're leaning forward, you got to pause right there. If you move, you have to drop all your letters and do it again. And I can stay on my gaze for as long as I want. And you, you got to keep that stance. But what so, letters? So the goal is to collect all six letters okay. and then to form a word with those letters. All right? Ah, OK. OK. A word, yeah? Yes. All right, guys. So sneak of shame coming right up. You'll see what happens. All right, sneak of shame coming right up. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, now do you know how you're going to convince me yet? To give you yes. the final letter? Okay, we'll see, okay? Yes. All right. R ready, get set, go. One, two, three. And as long as I'm here, you cannot move. How does it feel being in that position? Oh, it would be nice to release. Okay, I will release you then. Three. Okay, you got two letters already. You have three left and one for me. One, two, three. Oh. Oh. Okay, I wonder yeah, how long I'm not moving. I'm still walking. Okay, he's very close to another letter. One, two, three. Okay, that seems comfortable enough. What, what position is that, do you think? I just learned <laughs> you can turn any time, so. <laughs> one, two, three. Standing on one leg. Standing on one leg. Two and a half. Three. I wonder what's going to happen next. You're so close to the E. Mm. So close. One, two, three. Okay, you got all the letters. Yeah. Except for one. Please give me that letter. And what will I get if I give you the letter? You will what? hear a song. Oh, okay. Now I know what you, you, what you say a lot to many people to get what you want. But you have it. You Thanks. got me. <laughs> cool. Let me hold it for you. Let me yes. hold it. Starts with G. Yes. Then comes G. First comes G. Then comes it's maybe e. e. We'll see what, what happens. First comes Gentle. Oh, is it? it? Let's see. Let's see. Let. N. Is it really gentle? It is gentle. Perfect. Gentle it is. Congratulations. I'm a gentleman. Yes, you are a gentleman. The gentleman must uh, shake hands accordingly to a gentleman. Okay. Which is. Okay. That's a gentle kiss. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. But it's not really bye bye. It's just because a little bye bye. Such a gentleman you are. You promised me the song. Yes, I would sing uh, just for you mm -hmm. and for the other million of people who are watching us. All right. Guys, coming up next is a song, and you're going to love it. So stay tuned.
you guys I was wrong it's such a great song and you're back thank you for coming back yeah <laughs> my pleasure all right but I know there's something I'm not wrong about and mm. the next section is the idioms of the week section we know you love it because there's a lot a lot of useful tips a lot of useful sentences that you can use in, in the IELTS exam so idioms of the week coming up next idiom of this week Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. There's nothing as unpleasant as a woman who has been offended or whose love has not been returned. Next on Tam IELTS. Hey, welcome back our beautiful supermodel Phuong Mai to Stars to IELTS. Hope you will do your best this time and show your great performance with the real Tam IELTS speaking test. And of course, in the studio, our IELTS expert Oliver Holmes from Beauty's Council could be ready with lots of useful tips and vocabulary for you. Hey, don't be overexcited. Stay tuned. Next spot comes right now. Hi, you're back with us here on the Dama IELTS show. And we are with Oliver Holmes, who is the IELTS expert, who's going to help you work towards that perfect score during the IELTS exam. So let's talk to Oliver right now. Hello again. Hello. Lovely to be back. Thank you. Um, today's topic is on, is on gender equality. And, you know, uh, I think one of the women that we've seen um, already on the Tama IELTS show that's been paving the way, paving her own way in, a, in, a, in an industry, you know, that was dominated and controlled by men is Fung Mai. And I don't know if you remember Fung Mai, but she was, she was present on the first episode of Tama mm -hmm. IELTS during the Stars Do IELTS section. And she's back again today to talk about gender equality. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at what she has to say. So Fung Mai, now that you're back, we're so excited to hear what you have to say about this new topic. So take it away. So good afternoon, my name is Julian Burnley. Can you tell me your full name, please? Hello, my name is Nguyen Fung Mai. Thank you. Yeah. Can I see your identification, please, Mai? Sure. Now, in this first much. part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about your school days. What do you remember about your first school when you were a child? So I went to this very uh, beautiful elementary school, which is quite near my house. And uh, in that school, everybody was very tough, actually. So uh, I had quite a good education from that. In what ways did life at school change as you became older? So uh, when I got to the secondary school, actually, I... Uh, got into math, mathematics specialized class. So actually my life got a little bit harder, but it was fine. I could manage that. What was your favorite subject? Uh, well, I guess English. I did spend a lot of time studying it since I was uh, six years old and still studying it until today. Why? I just love languages. I love foreign languages. I even managed to uh, learn a little bit of French and planning to learn Chinese too. So I guess it's very important for a person to know different languages. Thank you. Now I'm going to give you a topic. 
and yeah. I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before you talk, you have one minute to think about what you're going to say. Okay. You can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes. Here's some paper and a pencil, Mark, taking notes. Mm -hmm. And here's your topic. I'd like you to describe a place that has some kind of special meaning mm -hmm. or some kind of special feeling for you. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Cool. You have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll okay. tell you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? Okay. Um, according to my job, as I said before, I have the chance to travel quite often. And the more I go and the more countries that I visit, I find out that the most important place and also the most meaningful place to me is actually my home. Now, I mean my home is where I was born, not the home that I'm staying in Saigon. Um, uh, to make it more clearly, that is the place where uh, my whole family lives right now. It is a small house right in the center of Hanoi where there are lots of animals and trees and plants because my parents all love animals. Why I say that it's the most uh, meaningful place is because sometimes when we go travel, sometimes when we go to work, uh, we, we pursue our success in life. We might forget who we are originally. We might lose ourselves in some certain ways. By coming back home, we know what route we are from and we can find our true self, what our true self is. And also by uh, staying next to our parents, we can uh, feel the true love because sometimes when you meet people out there you doubt what is love well then so every time I have such kind of doubt I would go home meet my parents my families and just to let them tell me that they love me the most and that is love I still have time wow so uh, I believe that lots of people would think the same way as I do actually there are a lot of movies Alice in Wonderland, right? She can make the whole adventure, but at the end, the, what she wants the most is coming back home because home is where you're from, home is what you will become, and home is what you will uh, take as the route to contribute to the culture, to your country. Thank you. <sighs> can I have the book with the paper and the pencil back, please, Mom? Yes, please. Thank you. So we've been talking about somewhere that is important for you. And I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related to this. Yes. Let's consider, first of all, uh, leaving home. So why do people leave home when they're quite young? What do you mean by young? <laughs> <laughs> so normally when people are like 18, right? Mm -hmm. Generally they might leave their home and move to a city. Why do they do that? To me, 18 is not young anymore. So uh, basically when you're 18, and you have the right to vote, you have the right to drive, and in some country you have the right to drink. That means the society sees you as a uh, person, a mature person who has full responsibility to uh, the society and your so life. So is it normal in your culture to leave your family house when you're 18? Uh, right now it is not so common, but uh, lots of people are doing that, especially the young generation even younger than me. I know that uh, in my generation it is not a unusual thing. Say, uh, I think in my class I was the only one to do so. I left home at 18 to pursue my own career that I chose. But at the and end... In order to leave home yes. at a young age, like 18, yeah. what sort of qualities do you think you need? Uh, knowledge and responsibility. And that could be built during your education in school and also by your family. Uh, lots of people, even at the age of 30 or 40, they can still be irresponsible to life, right? So, uh, it's, it, I think it doesn't matter how old you are, but it does matter how you see life and how responsible you are to yourself. Thank you very much, Mai. That is the end of the speaking test. All right, so what did you think of that performance? I thought it was a very fluent and smooth delivery. Yeah, absolutely. I think there were a couple of hiccups um, mm -hmm. on the way, mm -hmm. but um, generally I thought that she responded you know, very very happily to, to a, a wide range of questions. I liked um, her pronunciation as well. Mm -hmm. It was very, very good. Yes. Um, definitely a strong point. Yeah, so I, I generally I, I thought that she spoke very well. Um, I think there were a couple of um, cause and effect language, like mm -hmm. by knowing a country we have to visit it. I think she meant in order to get to know a mm -hmm. country. 
And according to my job, I have to travel according to, I think, should be due to. Due to my due job. To my job. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so very, very small. Uh, yeah, so a, a, a few small mistakes, and like Alice, it, when she mentions Alice in Wonderland, she said uh, she can make a whole adventure, mm -hmm. and uh, the collocation should be we can have yeah. a, an adventure or have go adventure. on an adventure. Um, but these are small mistakes, and generally, she, you know, she she gets around these language um, problems and and continues speaking, which is something we should definitely encourage. Right, absolutely, and also because of her job, she's not only a model, she's also an MC. A, a quite popular MC as well. Uh -huh. So she has to basically deal with all of these, you know, just put the mistakes behind and just move on. Yeah, and yeah. I think you can tell that it's, she's mm -hmm. got communication as a speciality. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's see what she thinks about her performance, shall we? Sure. All right, Fumai. Fumai, what do you think of your performance? I think this time I did all right. I mean, the topics are not my interest, uh, the topic. So uh, maybe sometimes I, I uh, took more time to think of what to say but uh, I guess my pronunciation was fine. Compared with the first time, how do you think you did this time? And do you think this time was a lot easier? Uh, I think the one that I mm, took uh, the previous time was better because uh, I don't really remember about the topic, but I guess that topic was more interesting to me. So I had more things to say. Well, this one, mm, um, it, was, it was fine, it was all right. What score do you think you got from that performance? Uh, I would give myself an eight. All right. So Fumai mentioned something that's really important. When you approach, a, when you when you are given a topic that you do not like or do you do not know a lot about, what do you do? Um, I would be brutally honest. Um, <laughs> if you don't like something, then tell the examiner that you don't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I'm not a massive fan of football. Mm -hmm. And if I got asked about sports, most of my answers would be about how little I know about it and how mm -hmm. much I'm not that keen about it. So be honest. Um, and also, it's definitely not a bad thing to admit that you don't know mm -hmm. about something. Um, I think there might be an Asian uh, trait of, yeah. uh, of, of, of you know losing face yes. if you if you say that you don't know the answer. Whereas I see it as a strength, mm -hmm. and I think that people who admit that they don't know about something um, are actually stronger because they can then begin to learn more Absolutely. about their weaknesses. So um, yeah, don't be afraid to ask the examiner to uh, clarify a question. Um, you can ask them to repeat a question or to explain what the question means in other words. You know, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? What exactly do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Can you paraphrase that question? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the examiner will um, actually do that for you. They'll change it into different language. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then if you have no idea about the topic, then be honest. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's a great. Some really good tips there. Some really, really good. So guys, check out our next section because it is our writing tip section and it's going to help you to write better and of course to speak better because that is the indirect result of you writing better. All right, so watch the video. Okay, so when it comes to writing, um, how does the IELTS essay differ from, you know, writing in a magazine or writing in a newspaper or just casual writing? Yeah, I, I think it's very important that uh, students recognize the difference between writing styles. Um, which is why it's quite difficult for teachers. They, they can't just bring a magazine article into a mm -hmm. class because magazine articles will often do things that we should definitely not do in, in a formal academic essay. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are a few examples of these things. Uh, first of all, you shouldn't ask questions in the essay mm -hmm. like, do you really think it's reasonable that this happens? <laughs> um, Get rid of these rhetorical questions. Mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't ask the examiner a question, and you don't ask questions in academic essays. Personal pronouns. Mm -hmm. 
the formal term. Things like I, me, my, all of these are far too personal. We want to make essays sound like it's very impersonal and it's about everybody mm -hmm. um, around us. So instead of saying me or I, what I personally like to do is say the vast majority of people believe because then it sounds like I'm really correct. Um, as well as that, I, I would avoid using exclamation marks and, um, and actually no idioms in, in our essays either. Uh, definitely avoid using quotes because that's not your English. That's right. uh, somebody else's English. Right, right. Even if you, know, you just want to quote somebody to make a point? Then I would suggested. paraphrase what they said. Ah, I yeah. see, I see. All right, some great tips there. And I think you know, the next person that's going to come on to the next section will definitely like those tips. Um, the person who's come on today for the Voice of the Week section is actually a guy. So, oh, actually a girl, I'm sorry, okay. a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and so let's see what she has to say. Hello everyone, my name is Wei Now I'm going to share with you guys my own story. It was a very cold evening and I was coming back from my friend's birthday party. She wished she wanted to take me home but I told her rather not because the way home was so familiar to me. On the way I heard something rustle and the sound was getting louder. I was a bit scared. From the dark, a black shadow came closer to me. I was freaking out and almost ran away. Turns out, it was an old woman in legs. She was dragging a huge nylon bag which was full of cans, trash, bottles, something like that. I don't know exactly. She smelled bad and seemed exhausted. The image did catch my heart. I urged myself to do something for her. Then I tried to carry the bag on my back across the alley. I really want to help more, but actually I just had less than 100,000 in my pocket. I still decided to give her the whole money I got. She denied, but I insisted on giving her. That time she was she was trembling with cold and I said, please take the little money and buy the hot bread to yourself. Finally she agreed to take that little money and thanked me. And she told me that it was way too much what she was asking for. But you know, less than 100,000 of it means nothing. I just wish I could do more for her. Seeing her went away and then disappeared behind the dim light, I wondered, why there were a lot of poor lives out there. I really want to do something, something that could help the poor, the homeless, and the sick to have a better life. That's why I haven't stopped doing volunteer work such as bringing the clothes to Martinet children with the Demo Volunteer Group and donating blood at Red Sunday. I hope that people from all around the world will raise their hands to do meaningful things for them. Together, we can heal the world. Thanks for listening and have a good time with Damayos. Bye-bye. Together we can heal the world. Yeah, I hope so. Very optimistic. Yes, very optimistic. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that performance? Yeah, she's very good. I, I, I like the way she speaks. Um, her pronunciation is generally uh, very good. Um, I like her language. I, I like her use of the, the word um, freaking out. Mm -hmm. I was freaking out. I, I, I really enjoy that, that phrase. Um, <laughs> Uh, just a few mistakes with the language, like I, I wanted to give her the whole money I got mm -hmm. instead of I wanted to give her all the money I had. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a small pronunciation error with the uh, clothes. clothes. She said clothes and it should be clothes, clothes. clothes. Uh, I think that's a very common pronunciation error in, in Vietnam. Yes. Uh, clothes and one other is advertisements. Advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> and another one that I, I often hear is industry, uh -huh. whereas it's being pronounced as industry. Not, not in this video, but right. a, a lot is, of times. Yeah. So the, these are very common mistakes in terms of the, uh, the stress on the, on the syllables in a, in a word. But I guess, you know, this is something that everybody needs to do. They need to just keep on listening to, to English and, and always listen for that word stress and, and listen to the way it might change over words like ad, advert, advertisement, advertise. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks so much. So, you know, to, to end this episode, are there good vocabulary for people to remember? Yeah, there's quite a few. Um, so one of them is to, to break through the glass ceiling. Um, the glass ceiling is this uh, invisible barrier between mm -hmm. uh, middle management and upper management mm -hmm. or higher political positions. 
Um, so if you can break through the glass ceiling, then you can reach the highest positions. Um, also, something is easier said than done. Mm -hmm. If something is easier said than done, it's very easy to talk about it, but it's very difficult to actually do it. Do it. Um, to make a name for yourself, mm -hmm. that means to, to become well known. All right, so thanks so much, Oliver, for, for coming onto the show. Thank you again. Yeah, and we hope to see you again soon, and hopefully you'll give us some more idioms and some more good vocabulary to use. <laughs> Absolutely, and I hope very so. Very great tips. <laughs> All right, guys, make sure you always tune in to our show every week. As always, for every week, no, we always remind you to take a video. We always remind you to use social media, use YouTube, use Facebook to send us your videos so that you can be featured on the Voice of the Week section. So for next week, we hope to go through all of your videos and feature you again. So we talked a lot about gender and gender equality and gender roles in this episode. And you know, we are not a teaching show, as we've said over and over again. We are a show where we hope to basically start conversations and inspire different you know, ideas in people. And hopefully this episode on gender equality and gender roles have been very, very useful and have been inspirational enough for you guys to reconsider how your role is in society and how your role in making the other gender a lot more better um, is basically instilled. So thank you for coming to the show and always join us again every time. We'll see you again soon. Bye, ciao, ciao. You know what, I've always wondered what it's really like, um, you know, what, how our crew members think about gender equality. So let's see what words they have to share with us, shall we? That's a lot of letters, right? What kind of words do you have in your own vocabulary and in your own mind to talk about gender equality? Share it with us on our Facebook and our YouTube. And until then, we'll see you again. It's really goodbye for now.